speaking of us, the shock has subsided and taking precautions has become secondhand nature. Things have actually become manageable. So it's easy to forget the folks who are still on the front lines of this fight to keep us safe, healthy, and fed. Recently, Councilmember Kern Price delivered a thank you to three local grocery stores, assuring them that we have not forgotten and truly do appreciate them. Today is really important um, because we wanted to honor the frontline grocery store workers who have been putting themselves at risk since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we really wanted to show our appreciation for them showing up to work every day and making sure that people in our neighborhood in South Los Angeles have access to fresh fruits and vegetables and groceries even during this pandemic. So today we're here um, on the corner of Slauson and Vermont at Superior um, to provide them with a little token of appreciation. Right now it's scary to come to work, but at the same time, we're, we're helping out the community, you know, helping out the customers, what they need, you know, because what's going on right now, it's, it's scary for everyone. We're providing them with lunch, um, bags which will include hand sanitizers, face masks, um, and a number of other items to keep them safe. It makes us feel appreciated, makes us feel great, you know, that we're out here for a good cause, serving our community, making sure, you know, we have everything they need. We're taking extra precautions for all our customers. You know, we, we have protocols in place. All our employees take extra precautions to assure that the safety of our customers comes first. People are encouraged to go to their grocery stores, support their grocery stores, because these are grocery stores that are in our neighborhood and they need our support just like we need them. From South Los Angeles to the San Fernando Valley, team members from the Office of Council President Yuri Martinez were out in full force. Their mission? To spread cool summer fun to the families of CD6. Take a look. We're here today in Van Nuys at the Mid-Valley Family YMCA. Council President Martinez thought we really need to have an event where we're giving kids some things to do during the summer, some water work stuff, you know, to get wet and sprinklers and, and water balloons and, and even fans. So uh, really trying to give some summer relief to the entire family in Council District 6. I'm here to get toys for my siblings. Um, they're bored at home and with all this COVID, you know, situation, they're just struggling, bored at home. So I wanted to get them a few toys. It's gonna keep the kids busy with the activities since they're not in school or they can't go anywhere to visit family and friends, so. As someone who grew up in a, a working poor family, um, she knows very well sort of the, the limitations and, and of, la of resources that a lot of these families have. It helps parents that uh, can't afford or the time to get out to get their children anything. I think it's awesome because some people don't have the resources to, to get um, toys or food for, for their children. I think these, these um, events are amazing. Anytime you can take something else off, off their plate, that's another expense they don't have to pay for. Nuri Martinez is doing this for our community. I think that's just, uh, we feel very blessed to have things like this. There's no government um, response like local government response. They can get in touch uh, with our office at 213-437-7006 or go to nuri-martinez.com. To know that uh, there's people out there that care. It's, it's very nice, it's a very nice thing. It's been 14 years, and even with the pandemic lurking, the Mar Vista Farmer's Market shows no signs of slowing down when it comes to bringing fresh produce to its community. Hello, and welcome to the 14th annual Mar Vista Farmer's Market Palooza. This year, the celebration is a lot more subdued than usual, but this year, because of COVID, we've decided we have to uh, celebrate safely and appropriately, 
and uh, it's a little more subdued around here than usual. So we're all trying to shoo away the virus and celebrate and have a good time at the same time. Harvest has always had one of the best farmers markets. So coming here, I think they're doing a great job with keeping everybody apart. And I think for everyone's overall health, I think it's a great thing to do. And I feel safe. We have a lot more staff than usual because of all the COVID regulations and necessary safety precautions. So as you can see, rather than have people just arrive at the market en masse, they have to filter through our, uh, our system. We operate with a strict head count. We're also keeping an eye on various areas of the market to uh, make sure that we're not over capacity. Since COVID hit, it's just become more important to me to have good vegetables, you know, like really clean vegetables and a diversity of fruits and vegetables because that helps build your immunity. I feel safer shopping outdoors where there's air blowing than going to a crowded supermarket inside. But it's pretty significant. Uh, instead of just a rolling wave of people entering the market from various points, everybody has to come through one channel. This market was way ahead of the curve that was mandated when there were some other markets that really weren't being operated to the best of the ability to stay ahead of COVID. Um, we had a plan from day one and kept refining that plan along with information that we get from the mayor's office or LA County Board of Health. <laughs>
everyone gets tested. Today, the council member's office partnered up with uh, the mayor's office, the fire department, and HACLA to provide free on-site testing for COVID-19. In talking with uh, the fire department, they say that this site has been one of the busiest ones as of yet. We decided to come this morning to get tested for COVID as a family because we want to protect our elders. We want to protect my mom, my dad. We, uh, my husband also has his mom and his dad. Uh, and we want to make sure that we protect them. We all thought it was important. We all thought that it was better to do it now. Uh, take the time to do it, like my wife said, so that we can keep everybody, keep ourselves safe and then keep others safe as well. I kind of was a little scared because I thought we were going to do the swabs that they usually do through the nose, but through the mouth I felt a little more comfortable doing it. And also, it was pretty, it wasn't really scary, so if anyone else were to get tested, I would say this kind of experience, it isn't traumatizing and I, I recommend like doing this type of testing. We might be in a good health situation, but uh, we're protecting others. I would highly recommend it because it is for your own safety and the people around you. San Fernando Valley Drive-In Movies return. Cruise and Takeout Bob's revs up Great Eats and Eagle Rock brings school supplies to a drive through All this next on Things to Do. Every Friday in Northridge since 2009, Cruise and Takeout Bob's has been the local cruise night for hot rodders and classic car enthusiasts. But with the recent stay-at-home orders for our state, business for Bob's has slowed and the start to cruise season was delayed. Now that self-quarantine laws are relaxing, we can begin cruising. Bob's is now open for carry-out orders and even car hop service. So bring out your hot rod, be it a classic cruiser or modern muscle. Enjoy the warmer weather and join others in our local community Fridays for Bob's Menu. Cruise and Takeout Bob's happens every Friday beginning at 4 p.m. 8876 Corbin Avenue in Northridge. For details, check out their listing on Facebook events. Over the last three years, My Valley Pass has had the great pleasure of bringing together movie fans from all over L.A. to the Lake Balboa Complex in the San Fernando Valley for a spectacular drive-in movie experience. This August, My Valley Pass is moving its signature San Fernando Valley summer drive-in nights to the Westfield Fashion Square Mall in Sherman Oaks. Don't miss this chance to have a night out at the movies, totally socially distanced in your own vehicle. Family films to be screened include... The Sandlot, Greece, Jurassic Park, and La Bamba. San Fernando Valley Drive-In happens at the Westfield Fashion Square, 14006 Riverside Drive. For more information, visit tickets.myvalleypass.com. Eagle Rock families are invited to pick up free school supplies for your children at the Get Ready for School Supply Drive. Eagle Rock Baptist Church is hosting a school supply drive through on Saturday, August 15th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Eagle Rock Baptist Church parking lot. We're giving away free school supplies for students of all stripes. For those with supplies to spare, you are also encouraged to donate by Thursday, August 13th. You can find a list of donation items on their Facebook event listing. For more details about the Get Ready for School Supply Drive, visit EagleRockBaptist.com. And that's a look at some things to do. That's it for this edition. I'm Rasha Goel. From all of us here at LA This Week, thanks for joining us. And a reminder that you can catch us online at lacityview.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. See you next time for more LA This Week.
Good morning and welcome to the Los Angeles City Council. Today is Tuesday, August 11th. I'm Nuri Martinez, the President of the City Council. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield present. Council Member Bonas is excused. Buscaino. Here. Cedillo. Present. Harris Dawson. Kuretz. Present. Krikorian. Here. Lee. Here. Martinez. Present. O'Farrell. Present. Price. Here. Rodriguez. Here. Rue. Present. Wesson. Wesson here. 12 members present and a quorum, Madam President. Okay, first order of business. Approval of the August 5th, 2020 uh, minutes. Okay, Mr. Lee moves and Mr. Rue seconds next. Commendatory resolutions for approval. Ms. Rodriguez moves and Mr. Uh, Price seconds next. Madam President, today is Tuesday and time for the flag salute. Mr. Lee, can you please lead us in the pl Pledge of Allegiance this morning? I have the honor to. If, colleagues, if you just rise with me to salute our flag, join with me. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Okay, Madam Clerk, let's go ahead and run through the agenda. Madam President, would Council like all items to go forthwith today? Without objection, that will be the order. Next. Uh, Madam President, there are requests to continue item 1G to August 25th and item 11 continued to August 11th. Actually, today is August 11th. Oh, I'm sorry. 18. Thank you. Okay, without, uh, without objection, that would be the order. Anything else? Items 1 through 12 are items noticed for public hearing. For item number 1, the department recommends receiving and filing items D, H, and J, and as much as the fees were paid and confirming the liens for A through C, E, F, and I. Items 13 and 14 are items for which public hearings have been held. There is a request to hold item 14 on the desk for an amendment. Items 15 through 26 are items for which public hearings have not been held. Items 27 is an item scheduled for closed session. Item 27 was waived from the Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee. On the supplemental agenda, items 28 and 29 are items for which public hearings have not been held. 10 votes are required for consideration. Okay, those items are now before us. Members, um, if you can please raise your virtual hand so I can call on you if you want to call any of the items special or you wanna, want to introduce an amending motion on any of the items. Mr. Cedillo? Mr. Cedillo, did you want to call any of the items special or introduce an amending motion? The answer is yes. Would you like me to do that now? I have a series of items for you, mostly cleanup. Uh, we would like to call special for item 1D. 1D? 
Uh -huh. Items 16 and 17. 16 and 17, are these just special or do you want to introduce an amending motion? A special. Okay. Please continue. 16 and 17. Mm -hmm. And items 28 and 29. And items 20 and 29? Correct. No, okay. 28 and 29. I'm sorry. Okay. And these are all just special, correct? Correct. Members, any other specials or amended motions? That's what you just have to say. Why should I have to call? Mr. Price? I need to recuse myself from item 27. Closed session item. Yes, we have you done to recuse yourself on item 27, Mr. Price. Thank you. Okay, I, M Madam Clerk, I do have an amended motion on item 14. I'm gonna go ahead and read that into the record. I move that the Rules Election and Intergovernmental Relations Committee report relative to the 2020 redistricting process be amended to add the following recommendations. Eight, request all appointing authorities to provide a resume and other relative background information for their appointee and the information be publicly accessible. Nine, require all commissioners to complete an ethics training prior to taking office. 10, instruct the city clerk to provide demographic information on the city's redistricting commission, similar to the demographic information reports that the clerk provides for other city commissions. 11, instruct the city attorney to draft an ordinance requiring commissioners to disclose all ex parte communications between commissioners and elected officials and their staff. 12, request the city's redistricting commission to avoid hiring current or former city staff that have been out of city service or under, for under a year. 13, request the city redistricting commission, when possible, to provide more than 72 hour notice of a public hearing. And 14, request the city, city's redistricting commission, when possible, to conduct evening and weekend public hearings to encourage participation for working families in the redistricting process. And second. my second is uh, Mr. Buscaino. Members, are there any other specials or amending motions you want to introduce? All right, seeing none, we're gonna go ahead and open our public comment. Madam Clerk, can you please read out the dialing information for our public? Yes, as indicated on the agenda, Members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466 and then press the pound sign. Press pound again when prompted for participant ID. Once admitted into the meeting, Press star 9 to request to speak. Again, members of the public wishing to offer public comment should call 669-254-5252 and use meeting ID number 160-535-8466. Press pound. Press pound again when prompted for a participant ID number. Once admitted into the meeting, press star nine to request to speak. Madam President. Okay, Mr. City Attorney, go ahead and read our speaking instructions for the members of our public. Thank you, Madam President. To members of the public calling in, when it is your turn to speak, please state which of the agenda items you'd like to speak on. You have one minute per item to speak up to three minutes total, and if you wish, one minute for general public comment. Please speak on the items first before providing general public comment. We will tell you when your time is up. When speaking on the agenda items, you must be on topic. Our goal is to get through as many speakers as we can. If you're not speaking on topic, or if we can't tell whether you're speaking on an agenda item, you will get one brief warning from me or the president. If you do not immediately get clearly on topic 
or again stray off topic, the President will cut you off and you will forfeit the rest of your speaking time and we'll move on to the next speaker. We will take 30 minutes total of public comment. Finally, for members of the public calling in to speak, as soon as you hear someone address you, you are live in the council meeting. If you're also listening to the council meeting on your computer, channel 35, or other device, please turn down the volume on those devices immediately. There's a time delay between the live meeting and the broadcast on those devices, and it will cause a lot of confusion if you continue to listen on your other devices. Thank you very much, Madam President. Okay, let's go ahead and take the first caller. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Yeah, hi, Daniel Gus, City Watch LA, item number 19 and general public comment. You have one on minute item for number, each. Go ahead. Yeah, th thank you. Uh, on item number 19, uh, I don't see why Mr. Wesson and Mr. Price both aren't recusing themselves from this because they have long financial times and long endorsement ties to uh, the Brotherhood Crusade, which, by the way, nothing wrong with the organization but they should recuse themselves from this as records reflect that they have long-term supportive relationships with them. They should recuse themselves from item number 19 unless the city council would like for me to dig up those records and publicize them and then publicly ask, why did Weston not recuse himself? Why did Price not recuse himself? Why did any council member with a relationship with the recipient of the city's largesse and by city, I mean the taxpayers like largesse. Why are these council members not recusing themselves from this item? We know it's going to pass unanimously because all of your voting records, uh, the, your, 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 your tally system, they all default to I. But the outcome won't change, but they need to recuse themselves. On to my general public comment. Um, council members, you are uh, apparently giving away the West Valley Shelter uh, to the Best Friends Organization, and there is this – ruse going on that public input is being considered here and there well my question is mr Coretz wants to be city controller he was disingenuous with the public about giving away the shelter or the pound i shouldn't call it a shelter the pound where best friends is now why is the city withholding public records regarding what's going to inevitably happen with the west valley shelter the question for mr lee is this is in your community mr lee where are you defending the services that this neighborhood is going to lose when this goes into the, into the occupancy of Best Friends? Why is Mr. Lee not standing up uh, and finding out where will these services be provided if the city no longer occupies the West Valley Shelter? And lastly, for Mr. Kikorian, Best Friends rakes in consistently more than $50 million a year. Why are the taxpayers, especially you, in this financial crisis... Thank you. Next speaker. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is uh, Sam Sachs. I'd like to speak on item 20, 23, and give general public comment. Do you have two minutes for um, your items and one minute for general public comment? Go ahead. Uh, real quick, I live in CD5. Paul Koretz here, like an absolute sham of representative. If you think you're going to win a city controller race, you have other things coming. Item 23, um, excuse me, item 23, uh, we do not need more funding for LAPD overtime. Uh, that's pretty obvious. I'll be short here because I know there are a lot of other people on the line. We need funding for services, not police. Uh, we don't have cooling centers in our district, yet we can continuously, like we can't find funding for that, but we continuously can find funding for police overtime. doesn't make sense. Uh, item 20, <laughs> excuse me there. Item 20, uh, again, you don't seem to be listening to your constituents and to the people in the streets. Uh, in Chinatown, there were calls to cancel rent. There were no calls to uh, renew the business improvement district. Uh, I don't see what you think you're accomplishing for the people you represent here. Uh, clearly, you're more interested, like your council member colleague, Jose Huizar, in lining your own pockets and working with developers to accomplish that end than you are in representing the people of Los Angeles. Uh, general public comment uh, along those lines in order to best represent the people of Los Angeles redistricting, excuse me, redistricting needs to be done justly and openly. Um, I want to uphold the demands made by a letter signed on by Unrig LA, Ground Game, and many others. Um, I know that that item has already met its 
requirement for public comment, I yield my time. Thank you, Speaker. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, I'm Mimi from CD4. I'd like to speak on items 20, 23, and give general public comments. Okay, you have two, two minutes for your items and then one minute for your general public comment. Go ahead. Um, regarding item 20, while many Angelinos are facing eviction and wondering how they're going to put food on the table, I don't understand why we have an item about bids. Um, we need to be canceling rent, not approving bids. Item 23, this is, of course, Paul Kurepp's transferring 70 k out of the general city fund to fund the police, even though everyone keeps demanding to defund the police. Paul, maybe you didn't understand it the first few hundred times. We want to defund the police. Defund. Say it with me. Defund the police. On to my general comment. Um, you canceled the homelessness and poverty meeting for Thursday, so there's no time to talk about it. Homelessness is one of our city's major crises, but you won't even try to use your power to do something about it. David Wu, where are you? We've been out here every day, and I haven't seen you at all. You've been invited to the Valley of Change. You were invited to help pack and distribute healthy lunches for those in need on Saturday. Where were you? Don't go on Twitter and say you have been a pioneer for homelessness. All you've done is PR and make this crisis worse. Show up or get out. Do any of you even know your houseless constituents? Some of their names are TJ, Amy, Barry, Drew, Heaven, Alex, Annabelle, three and house people die every day in LA. Don't let them be next. Cancel rent. I yield my time. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Sean McMorris, uh, I'd like to speak on item 14 and general public comment. Okay, you have one minute for your item and one minute for general public comment. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, democracy is dependent upon equal and fair representation and impartial institutions. Gerrymandering undermines these principles. LA's current redistricting process is independent and in name only, and reforms must happen to restore trust in these halls. The ideal is a wholly independent redistricting model like that of the state, county, or the Iowa model. But until then, reforms to LA's current model can and should take place ASAP to prevent corruption, political revenge, and constituent cherry picking. Voters should choose their elected leaders, not the other way around. Common Cause, which I am uh, work for, has co-signed the Unreg LA Coalition letter, which outlines a series of reforms that can be implemented via ordinance before LA's new redistricting process begins. We hope that you will read them and act upon as many as possible. Uh, you get one shot at this. Please do the right thing for the residents of LA and for democracy. I'll now take my general public comment. Um, I just want to add that uh, we appreciate the amendments that were recent, which were just made by Council President Mary Martinez. Um, we also hope that uh, uh, you will consider some of the other um, uh, amendments we recommended in our coalition letter, uh, uh, particularly those pertaining to conflict, potential conflicts of interest uh, and uh, in terms of uh, applicants providing their resume, um, we, we would hope that they would disclose some of these potential conflicts or relationships with council members in addition to that resume. As well, we hope you'll look at independent staffing uh, as well as independent council. And uh, we're glad that you're addressing uh, ex parte communications, uh, but we hope that you will even consider simply banning ex parte communications. Uh, lastly, please consider the ad hoc redistricting committee. Uh, that said, uh, Common Cause is uh, looking forward to working with you uh, on the council and uh, eventually getting to a completely independent redistricting commission. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hello, my name is Tiffany Doe and I'd like to speak on item number 20 as well as general public comment. Number 20, the Chinatown bid literally failed to get the number of petitions needed to renew, but you're just going to 
override all of that and just let them through. This is absolutely ridiculous. The bid is essentially a private security force, and they don't do anything for small businesses. CCED, the organization that I represent or am part of today, has done more for small businesses, and they are completely grassroots funded. BID is just this money hog that is like a private security force. You need to not let them. I completely oppose item 20 and renewing their city contract because they don't do anything for small businesses. General comment, you need to cancel eviction. You need to cancel the rent and defund the police. Thank you very much. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hey, my name is Sabrina Johnson, and I'd like to speak on all items, please, and general public comment. Great. You have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Appreciated. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to go a little out of order. Let's start with item number 23. Corrette wants to move 70K to fund police overtime in his district. Lee, who is always the fascist, seconds. Um, we have been asking for the exact opposite of this. In fact, like thousands, tens of thousands of Angelinos have been asking you for the exact opposite of this for months. I don't understand why you're still doing this. Paul Krikorian, when you said, don't worry, we can continue to make changes to the budget all year, this should not have been what you meant. Uh, moving on to item number 15. And I just want to let you know that I'm going to keep doing this. Every time you agendize REAP stuff, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep calling in and telling the public exactly what you're doing. So this is for the public. Uh, the rent escrow account program, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a teach-in here. When a rental property is deemed unsafe to inhabit, the city can take over control of the property temporarily via something called the rent escrow account program, REAP. When this happens... Tenants stop paying their rent to the landlord and begin paying half of their normal rent to the city instead. That money goes into an escrow account until there's enough to make the necessary repairs to make the property habitable. Once that's done, a property can be removed from the program and tenants go back to paying their full rent to the landlord. So here's why I hate that you're doing this today. Uh, a, the rent is about to double for everyone living in these properties during a pandemic. And B, instead of agendizing any renter protections at all, the LA City Council is prioritizing handing control of these properties back over to the most egregious slumlords in Los Angeles. Real cool, real cool. So you're making it abundantly clear that your priority is not to actually help the people of the city of Los Angeles, but in fact, to make sure that landlords continue to collect a paycheck during this time. You're not fooling anybody. Um, all right, and then jumping over to number 20, the Chinatown bid. Jesus fucking Christ. This is basically funding the police. It's just private police. Like, bids are just fucking private thugs that exist to harass unhoused people and push them away from gentrifying neighborhoods. What the fuck is wrong with you people i don't even have anything more to say about this i i'm gonna give up my general public comment because i'm so angry with you all that i'm shaking but just know that next time you agendize reap instead of renter protections i'm gonna call in again and again and again and again i yield my time fuck all of you it's wonderful thank please, you please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on So effectively, Charlie. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Is this me? Y yes. Which items do you want to speak on? Yeah, it's uh, Rob Kwan. I'd like to speak on number 2014 and general public comment. Great. So you have two minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Oh, yep. I'll be brief on number 20 because I've... Um, mentioned my opinions on business improvement districts with you many a time. Uh, just want to echo the sentiments that, you know, these private security forces often do things that we would never let LAPD do. So if we're talking about defunding the police, we shouldn't be replacing them with um, <laughs> really brutal private security forces that have no accountability. 
Um, I'd like to turn to item 14 and give my genuine thanks to the council president and uh, council member Puscaino for seconding um, some really important changes to our redistricting process. Um, over recent years, this council has embraced moving towards um, higher turnout elections, overhauled our city's matching funds program and included really key measures to ensure grassroots accessibility. And now this really does help improve um, the redistricting process and, and gives a fair shake. Um, I, I think on the demographic issue um, and the representation of our commission, recently council members Cedillo, Kevin De Leon, uh, Weston, and former mayor Viragosa have spoken on the need for Latino representation. And this information is important. If you look at our last redistricting commission, six out of 21 were women. Six out of 21 were Latino. So if we're going to criticize the state and their commission, we should look at ourselves as well. And um, I'm happy to hear that there's going to be some more transparency on what the applicants are providing. Um, I, I think uh, when it comes to ex parte communications, uh, a ban may have some, some obstacles. But if we're going with disclosure, I think it's important to ensure that we don't have any loopholes there uh, so we can ensure anything that's being communicated is actually in the public record. Um, independent counsel would be something that would really help uh, strengthen the independence and, and expertise of this commission. Uh, there was a mention of 72 plus hours for public disclosure of meeting agendas. Uh, we were in our letter hoping for 14 days as the state follows for the Bagley Keen Act. Uh, it's really, really important to ensure that community organizations, uh, local groups in your district have the ability to turn out representation for these meetings. So please uh, heed that advice. Um, language justice has been something this council has uh, struggled with um, in, in <laughs> numerous occasions. So please, I, I hope the city clerk and any staffing uh, makes firm consideration of language justice and the complications of COVID. Um, the most important thing that I did not hear in the amendments was any mention of removal power. And uh, currently, council members, elected officials being able to remove a commissioner at will wholly undermines the process. This is something that, you know, we need to have some sort of protection here. Um, I, I think a very basic, straightforward protection would be that removal of a uh, redistricting commissioner requires a majority vote of the redistricting commission or the council, whoever. I think that should be a bigger decision than one elected official. Uh, that is not something addressed in the charter, so you have full ability to address that. Redistricting is never going to be pretty, um, but these steps are really important for ensuring that we have a process people can have faith in, um, something that doesn't divide you, our Mr. community, Kwan. doesn't result in litigation, and doesn't divide the council. Thank you. So thank you for taking these really important steps. I really genuinely appreciate them. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Gina Viola, and I'd like to speak on item 20, 23, 27, and general public comment. Okay, you have three minutes for the items and one minute for general public comment. Please begin. Item 20, you have the power to halt all evictions. Instead, you're working to gentrify Chinatown with renewal of the bid that you didn't even get enough signatures for. Item 23, more money transferred to the LAPD. We will see this over and over again at every meeting all year long until the LAPD has recouped your supposed budget cuts made to appease a growing public outcry to defund the police. The funding all lands in the LAPD coffers, but the work is done by organizations on the street. What is the city council doing? Item 27. This council has no business conducting anything in closed session. You have at least one council member under indictment, and clearly more of that is to come. General public comment. It is clear that you have zero interest in what the public has to say. Forcing us to give comment before you've even discussed anything on the agenda just proves that point. Our only option to speak on anything you've discussed is to do so on social media. You need to take steps to find a way to receive comments more meaningfully because this is not it. I am very tired of living in a wealthy city that relies on the backs of organizations out in the streets doing your jobs for you. K-Town for All, LA Can, Street Watch LA are actually making a difference with the city's biggest issue while you sit in council meetings and ignore them all. Defund the police and fund the organizations out doing your jobs. We reject the expansion of the LAPD in the shape of what you call community policing. Community policing killed Ezel Ford six years ago today. 
At long last, I'm going to yield my time. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, my name is Devin Manny, and I would like to um, submit uh, general public comment. Sure, you have a minute. Please begin. Hi, my name is Devin. I reside in the District of Council Vampire Mitch O'Farrell. I, I feel like the people have been relatively hard on you all the past month or so, you know, pushing you to do really anything about the looming eviction crisis or the plague of police brutality in the city or, I mean, God forbid, actually helping Angelinos not die in droves. Well, looking at the agenda for today, I get it. You guys are swamped. Thank you. Sir. About Thank items you. two through ten to improve and maintain street lighting districts in the seat formerly occupied by your soon-to-be imprisoned colleague Jose Huizar. Do they even understand item twenty-three, a motion by Job of the Hut cosplayer Paul Caret to give seventy thousand dollars to the LAPD for overtime? I don't know how you guys handle all this pressure. Hell, if I was in your position. I'd have walked slowly into the ocean long ago. Keep up the amazing work, council members, and don't let the haters get you down. Paul Caress, eat shit. I yield my time. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Speaker, are you there? Uh, hello, yes. Which items would you uh -huh. like to please, please turn, turn down the volume on your other devices. Which items would you like to speak on? Uh, we would like to speak on uh, general... Um, general public general general public comment yes sure. okay you have one minute go ahead uh okay that that's a too short for us but uh, before that i'd like to first uh, our phone number seven one four three 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 six zero zero nine so if you needed to speak to us uh, more about the case uh, what we are talking about is uh, really uh shocking uh report about uh, Los Angeles Police Department, 12 detectives, uh, illegal uh, criminal actions. They spent five months uh, to investigate an uh, auto fraud case. And uh, the 12 detectives and the one Sergeant Joe Tellis, plus the Commander Clark, in charge of a commercial crime section, totally altered the uh, auto fraud case and uh, presented the LADA office with a, a complete fraudulent investigation. In order to protect the perpetrators, they have a personal connections from being prosecuted and also to cause the DA to deny Thank you. them. Thank you. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Yes, I'd like to speak on uh, items 1, 7, 12, 19, pr basically all items, plus public comment, please. Okay, you have three minutes for all your items and one minute for general public comment. Thank you. Okay, Go ahead. thank you. Good morning. Um, and welcome back uh, uh, from vacation, the criminally insane Los Angeles City Council. Item number one. Um, Placing liens on people's properties again in the middle of a pandemic when you have stolen uh, $1.2 billion of HHH money. Uh, you're placing this burdens on ordinary people that can't pay uh, in ruses for REAP, et cetera, to take their properties. Criminal activity, as the caller before said. Item number seven has sleazy Marquise's Dawson's name on it. So that has to be something of fraud. Uh, item number 12, liquor licenses uh, under Huazar's name. This has Wesson, dog face, corrupt Herb Wesson's name all over it. 
why is this even coming up on the council agenda? The, it, it, it's it's as vacant council member liquor licenses you're approving goddamn people in the middle of a pandemic where people are dying and starving to death and being evicted. It's unbelievable. Wesson and Price with the Vision Theater. Uh, we will be sending this and a question and demands to the FBI why you have not re recused your criminal corrupt selves from this item. The Vision Theater, Brotherhood Crusade, you've, like the caller before, you have taken lots of money, just like Wesson has taken vaping money, killing children. That's a criminally corrupt, criminally insane Herb Wesson. LAPD funding, you people don't get it. We want funding for people, not police being brutalized, corrects, and the rest of you criminals. The people are dying in the street. You have stolen all the HHH money, building these units at $600,000 a piece. When at $700,000 a piece, they were 400 square feet. What is wrong with you people? The people want representation. We want all of you voted out, all, all of you, gone. The people want to live. You just want to line your pockets. You're disgusting. I'll go on to my um, public comment, please. Hello? Yes, please begin. We're still here, sir. You have your minute for Thank general you. public comment. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, as a caller uh, uh, before stated, the this is uh, public look up vote trading and the, the votes that the LA City Council takes, almost 100 percent, 99 point something something percent are all yeses. They vote for each other. You vote for mine, I'll vote for your, your motion. So why do they even show up? This is all, it, and vote trading, by the way, is illegal. So why do they even show up to the city council? this sham of a public uh, uh, spectacle so they can call items special and they can campaign and, and make themselves look good. Well, you don't look good. You're all criminals. Sleazy Dawson is evicting the FIBA Center, Culture City Center, Dorset Village, almost a thousand people he's evicting for his billionaire. Thank you, sir. Next speaker. Please state your name and the item you'd like to speak on. Hi, yeah, this is Richie Serjanko uh, from Sunrise Movement LA and the People's City Council. I'd like to speak on item 23, uh, 20 in general public comment. Okay, you have two minutes for your items and one minute for your general public comment. Go ahead. Great, thank you. Um, Shout out, Mike Bonin had a great, uh, great town hall last night. I hope you all were able to tune in. It was really interesting. Um, it's directly related to item 23. Uh, the town hall last night was about, you know, defunding the police and reimagining public safety. Item 23 is here, Paul Caret, uh wanting to transfer $70,000 to the police overtime budget. Let us, everyone listening, let's not forget that Paul Koretz is a liberal white supremacist, and he really hates when people say Paul Koretz is a liberal white supremacist. He really pushes back against that. So whenever anyone calls in and addresses Paul Koretz, make sure to address him as liberal white supremacist uh, Paul Koretz, or I forget who the caller was. I think it was Devin. So, so Great can, nickname. Can we get more player. clearly back on the item, speaker? Absolutely. Yeah, the 70000 uh, to the police overtime budget, it's related to, you know, defunding the police, which we've been pushing for the past, uh, you know, uh, four months or so. Uh, Paul Kretz, I was actually arrested and attacked and targeted by the LAPD in your district at 3rd and Fairfax. Um, so this is a very personal issue for me that you want to give the police more money, even though I was tackled by two police officers, dragged and hit by them right in your district. 
Uh, that doesn't matter to you. you. You're a liberal white supremacist and you want to give them more money. Uh, item 20, the Chinatown bid. Um, Sabrina Johnson really took care of this for me. Um, but, you know, private police, uh, if, if this isn't defunding the police, bids are just private police and they're going to push unhoused people out of that, out of that area. Um, and then to general public comment, yo, it is August. We were begging you in April to cancel rent, to put a real eviction moratorium in, to house unhoused people. It's August. It is August. Have you guys not seen the report about how many people are going to in the next week, you aren't doing anything. You are literally not doing anything. And people are about to, hundreds of thousands of people in Los Angeles are about to be evicted because you aren't doing anything. What is wrong with you? How do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? There's landlords on the council right now. Half the council is landlords. How do you sleep at night? There are people going to be evicted, hundreds of thousands of people out on the streets. You guys aren't doing shit. How do you feel? How does that make you feel? As a person, not as a city council member, as a person, you should feel awful. You should feel like a bad person. You should, you should stay up all night knowing that 100,000 people are going to be on the streets because of your inaction. This is on you. Do something about it. I yield my time. Fuck you, Paul Caret. Thank you, sir. That concludes speakers for uh, public comment for our agenda today. Let's go ahead and vote on a few items. Okay, Madam Clerk, what items are we voting on? The first vote should be on item 1H and J in as much as uh, this, the uh, owners, the fees have been paid and the department recommends receiving and filing. Um, also, items 1A through C, E, F, I, 2 through 10, 12, 13, 15 through 26 are available for voting. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and open the roll on these items. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, I. Buscaino. Buscaino, I. Sidio. Sidio, I. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Crick Corian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Wesson, aye. 13 ayes. These items are adopted. Next, mm -hmm. Madam President, item 14 is available for, uh, a, for a voting. Uh, the amendment has been read in the record. Okay, let's go ahead and prepare to vote on this item. Let's go ahead and open the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Sadio. Sadio, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Kirk Corian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Yes. Wesson. Wesson, aye. 13 ayes. The item is adopted as amended. Okay, what's the next item? Uh, Madam President, the council has options. Uh, 
items 1D, 16, 17, 28, and 29 was called special uh, by Council Member Cedillo, or item 27 was also they, called oh, special. Oh, oh. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the first one, Mr. Cedillo, called special, 1D. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, I'd like to move to eliminate the uh, late fee charge, the accumulated interest associated with this case, and to conform this lien to be then received and filed. The goal here is to eliminate the lien on the uh, tenant. Second. In its entirety. All right, let's prepare to vote on this item. Let's go ahead and open the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Craig Corian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Yes. Wesson. Wesson, aye. 13 ayes. The item is adopted as amended. Okay, let's move on to item 16, call special by Mr. Cedillo. Mr. Cedillo, item 16. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, item 16 would like to adopt the uh, CAO report. Is there a second to Mr. I'll second Cedillo? That. Okay. I can, oh, I'm going to go ahead and second that. Let's go ahead and prepare to vote on this item. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. <clears throat> Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Yes. Wesson. Aye. 13 ayes. The item is adopted as amended. Okay, let's move on to item 17, call special by Mr. Cedillo. Yes, uh, again, move to adopt the CAO report. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Buscaino. Go ahead and open the roll on item 17. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Krikorian. Lee. Aye. Krikorian, aye. Thank you, Mr. Krikorian. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Yes. Wesson. Wesson, aye. 13 ayes. The item is adopted as amended. Okay, let's move on to item 28, call special by Mr. Cedillo. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, we move to move this matter urgent forthwith. Second. Buscaino, let's go ahead and open the roll. You need two uh, votes. Madam President. You need two votes on this item. Yes. Let's, let's go ahead and vote on the item and then vote on the urgent forthwith. Go ahead and open the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Buscaino. 
Just kind of, you know, I. Sidio. Sidio, I. Karis Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. I. Crick Horian. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Wesson, aye. I think I just had an Greek Korean aye. Thank you, Councilmember Krikorian. Thirteen ayes. The item is adopted. Let's go ahead and vote on the urgent forthwith on this item. Let's open the roll. Bloomingfield. Bloomingfield aye. Buscaino. Buscaino aye. Sidio. Sidio aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Wesson, aye. 12 ayes, the item is adopted urgent forthwith. Okay, let's move on to item number 29. This was also called special by Mr. Cedillo. Alas, Madam Chair, thank you so much uh, for your indulgence. This is just an addition to our recommendations. It's not an amendment. I am requesting a verbal report back every two weeks on this uh, grant process to the ad hoc COVID committee and a monthly report on the home key site acquisitions, occup occupancy, and operations so that we can continue to move this process forward. Second. Okay, let's prepare to vote on this item. Go ahead and call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Sidio. So do I. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Crick Horian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Yes. Wesson. Aye. 13 ayes. The item is adopted. Okay, let's move on to item 27. There's been a request from Mr. Price to recuse himself from this item. Mr. Buscaino, would you like to speak on this item? This, this um, was hurting your committee, or I should say it was waived. We have consideration of this matter from your committee. Yes, thank you, Madam President. The uh, Trade, Travel, and Tourism Committee waived this item before you. It's a routine settlement and could be considered an open session unless any members have any questions. Members, are there any questions before we vote on this item? Okay, seeing now, we can just ask uh, Mr. Price to please. Yes, let's have Mr. Let's Price. make sure he's off the board. Yeah, off the Mr. board. Mr. City Attorney, anything else you want to add to this item? Um, well, I'd like to read Mr. Buscaino's motion, which I believe will require a second, and then summarize the terms of the settlement before we Second. Vote. Mr. Hold on. We haven't read it into the record, Mr. Cedillo, but. Um, so Mr. Buscaino's motion concerns the parking spot, uh, PS, uh, um, uh, uh, excuse me, the TPS, the parking spot uh, versus City of Los Angeles. It's a CEQA writ litigation regarding the Landside Access Modernization Plan, LAMP, for LAX. The moving clauses are, one, authorize the city attorney to accept the following terms of settlement. 
approve the Board of Airport Commissioners resolution of June 18, 2020, approving and recommending council approve the settlement attached to BOAX resolution, which results in dismissal of the parking spots lamp sequa action, and two, authorize the city attorney or designee to make necessary technical adjustments or adjustments uh, subject to the approval of the city administrative officer and authorize the controller to implement the instructions. And as a summary of the main session. terms broadly stated of the settlement, they would be as follows. First, require the parking spot, TPS, to do the following. One, dismiss the lamp sequa writ action. Two, release all claims relating to the lamp sequa writ litigation. Three, covenant not to sue or bring action that could delay, prevent, or materially impede the approval, construction, implementation, or operation of LAMP. Um, uh, div, uh, excuse me. Uh, or of projects that would be developed in the PTMA, which is the Passenger Terminal uh, Modernization Area, or any future activity that is part of PTMA project activities. Four, covenant not to sue regarding decisions made during the period from the effective date of the agreement until the West um, Intermodal Transportation Facility, the ITF West, opens for passenger service with respect to the allocation of Central Terminal Area, CTA, access to the TPS shuttles or other courtesy vehicles. And in return, TPS would receive first access to the CTA until at least the latter of May 31, 2023, or the date upon which the ITF West Station opens for passenger yep. service. <laughs> Two, CTA access partly with courtesy vehicles and hotel shuttles after the APM opens to ITF West until January 1st, 2025. And finally, third, reimbursement of up to $850,000 for costs directly related to modifications to ingress and egress to the TPS central facility necessitated by LAMP. And I believe we need a uh, second. Was that Mr. Cedillo? That was Mr. Cedillo. Thank you. So I, I believe we can vote now. Okay, let's prepare to vote on this item. Blumenfield. Go ahead and open the roll. Blumenfield, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Councilmember Price is recused. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Aye. 12 ayes. The motion is adopted. Madam President, uh, for the record, uh, the clerk needs to announce that regarding items 2 through 10, the street lighting districts, the public hearing is now closed for 2 through 10. The tabulation of ballots shall take place in space 300 of 555 Ramirez Street uh, on Wednesday, August 12th at 10 a.m., to access the live stream, join Zoom meeting ID 950-3872-2539. The passcode is capital A, 4, capital S, little k, little i, capital Q. The ballot tabulation results will be announced on Tuesday, September 1, 2020. Okay, anything else? Uh, no, Madam President. Okay, um, there's, um, it's been brought to my attention we need to consider item 29. Uh, CAO has a amendment. Uh, first vote is to reconsider 20. Uh, item 29. The first vote is to. to Suspend the rules since it was uh, adopted forthwith. 
So, so does, let me read uh, the roll call to suspend the rules. Uh, Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Wesson, aye. 13 ayes. Uh, the next vote should be to reconsider item 29. Uh, let me read the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Aye. Wesson. Aye. 13 ayes. Madam President, item 29 is now before the council. Okay, welcome. Ms. Chavez, did you wanna read this, the amendment into the record? Yes, good morning, Yolanda Chavez with the CAO's office. So the only amendment is that to the authorizing resolution and the amount of funds you're gonna allow us to apply to the state for. So instead of a maximum award of 250 million, we would request that you allow the city of Los Angeles as the co-applicant with the housing authority of the city of Los Angeles as the lead applicant to apply for up to 265 million. The, fifth, the extra 15 million is for operating subsidies that we can receive for operating costs for up to two years for any of the sites that are successful. So that is the amendment to the authorizing resolution that we would like you to approve. So it just increases the amount by 15 million. Okay, I just wanna make, I just wanna ask you something really quickly. So is the money coming from the state? Is that correct? Right, okay. so that would be our total application to the state of right. up to 265 million. Okay, let's go ahead and prepare to vote on this item as amended. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Blumenfield. Blumenfield, aye. Buscaino. Buscaino, aye. Cedillo. Cedillo, aye. Harris Dawson. Yes. Kuretz. Aye. Krikorian. Aye. Lee. Aye. Martinez. Aye. O'Farrell. Aye. Price. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Rue. Yes. Wesson. Wes and I. 13 ayes, the item is adopted as amended. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's move on to verbal motions, Madam Clerk. How many do you have? Yes, there are seven verbal motions to read into the record. Okay, why don't you start with the first one? Uh, the first one is introduced by Council Member Cedillo. This is to be referred to the Health, Education, Neighborhood, Parks, Arts, and River Committee. This requests the Film LA to report on how the city and Film LA can do more to push for equity for all in the film industry, including Latinos, African Americans, Asians, and women. Additionally, it requests to report on the feasibility of using CD1 for a pilot program. And a seconder? Second. I believe that was seconded by Council Member Rodriguez. Correct. 
Okay, next motion. The next motion is introduced by Council Member Harris Dawson. This instructs the city engineer to report with recommendations to temporarily close the alley adjacent to 3420 West Lawson Avenue, westerly of Crenshaw Boulevard between West Lawson Avenue and West 58th Place. This is to be referred to the Public Works and Gang Reduction Committee, and a seconder is required. Our old still member was. Who's right. a second? Is there a second to this motion? And second. Second. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Thank you. The next motion has been introduced by Council Member Blumenfield. This is to be referred to the Energy, Climate Change, and Environmental Justice Committee. This instructs the Department of Building and Safety, with the assistance of the Bureau of Engineering and Sanitation, to prepare a report with recommendations relative to new construction projects and their impacts on stormwater drainage. And a seconder. Second. Second by Mr. Cedillo. Next. Thank you. A commendatory resolution has been presented by Council Member Blumenfield. This is to proclaim that September 2020 as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month in the City of Los Angeles. Second. Second. Second by Mr. O'Farrell. Okay, next. Thank you. The next verbal motion is referred to uh, council. Uh, it is a motion introduced by Council Member Cedillo to be placed on the next council agenda relative to authorizing the Bureau of Engineering to accept a contribution in the amount of 50000 from Metabotic Studio for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers review of the Metabolic Studios Section 404 and 408 applications for the Bending the River Back into the City project, also known as the Water Wheel project. Is there a second to this second. motion? Second. Second by Mr. O'Farrell. Next is a motion introduced by Councilmember Rue referred to the ad hoc COVID committee relative to the chief legislative analyst, city administrative officer, and economic workforce development department to report back on the feasibility of implementing up to 100 million city of Los Angeles paycheck protection program for small businesses within the city limits. Is there a second to this motion? Second. Second. Mr. Buscarino. Next. The next is a resolution introduced by Council Member Rue referred to the Rules, Elections, and Intergovernmental Relations Committee relative to including in the city's 2019-2020 state legislative program support for AB 1253 Santiago as amended, which would increase taxes for high income earners to generate more resources for essential state services. Is there a second? Second. To second. Second by Mr. Harris Dawson. And that is all the verbals. Okay. Um, let me go. Let me go back to the members, Mr. Buscaino. Thank you, Madam President. I um, move with the concurrence of the mayor that by the adoption of uh, the resolution, the city of LA hereby includes in its 2019-20 federal legislative program, support for HR 7024, sponsored by Congress member Nanette Berrigan, the Climate Smart Ports Act, which 
would establish a $1 billion per year grant program for the purchase of clean energy infrastructure at ports and authorize an additional $50 million a year for the Diesel Emissions Reduction Act program to fund projects that reduce port emissions. Second. Second by Mr. Kikorian. Any others, Mr. Buscaino? That's it, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blumenfield. Hey, thank you. I have uh, two motions to read. Uh, one is sort of a, a response to the, the shocking article about the illegal short-term rentals this weekend. And it basically says the moving clause is I therefore move that, and, and Mr. Rue has decided to second this, therefore move that the council request the city attorney and instruct the Department of City Planning, the Department of Building and Safety and other relevant city agencies to report on the progress of implementing and enforcing the city short-term rental ordinances and advise if more remedies are needed to ensure short-term rental companies and users abide by established law. Second. Second, second by Mr. Rue. Okay, and then the second one I have is not a, it's a, it's a resolution and, and Mr. Price has agreed to second it. Uh, and I'll read the moving clause, which is, uh, now, therefore, be it resolved with the concurrence of the mayor that by adoption of this resolution, the city of Los Angeles hereby includes in the 2019-2020 federal legislative program support for uh, Senate Bill 4482, which is the Booker Portman uh, Act, and it's called the Strengthening Reporting of Actions Taken Against the Normalization of Relations with Israel Act of 2020, which would require the State Department to include a status report on anti-normalization laws in countries covered by the Department's Bureau of Near Eastern uh, Affairs in its annual report on human rights practices. Okay, and that you said your second was Mr. Price. I just need to confirm that, Mr. Price. Second. Thank you. Correct. Second. Thank you. Mr. Correct. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I have three motions. I'll read the moving clauses. Uh, and this one is uh, uh, seconded by Mr. Rue. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Los Angeles City Council finds that Lithuania's efforts to minimize or even deny its historical involvement in the Holocaust is contrary to a truthful depiction of the Holocaust and its atrocities, and be it further resolved that the City Council denounces Lithuania's efforts toward the historical record which shows many Lithuanians actively collaborated with Nazi Germany in the assassination of Jewish nationals. Okay, thank you. And you said your second was Mr. Rue? Yes. Mr. Rue, can you confirm that? Yes, I'm seconding it. Thank you. Next, Mr. Koretz. I therefore move that the Civil and Human Rights Department, with assistance from the City Administrative Officer and Personnel Department, be directed to report to the Personnel and Animal Welfare Committee within 15 days on the department's hiring plan. I further move to exempt the Civil and Human Rights Department from the city's hiring freeze in order to allow the department to quickly and effectively execute its hiring plan. And Mr. Kikorian has uh, offered to second this one. Okay, Mr. Kikorian, thank you. Next, Mr. Koretz. And uh, this one is co-presented by council members Wesson and Price. And uh, uh, council member Marquise Harris Dawson has agreed to second. Um, now, therefore, be it resolved with the concurrence of the mayor that by the adoption of this resolution, the city of Los Angeles hereby includes in its 2020-2021 federal legislative program support for HR 35 the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act, which would make lynching a federal crime. Okay, and that was co-presented by Mr. Wesson and Mr. Price. Gentlemen, can you confirm yes. that? Thank you. And second yes. by Mr. Harris Dawson? Yes, second. Thank, thank you. Any others, Mr. Koretz? No, that's it, thank you. Mr. Rue? Thank you, Madam Chair. This is actually, I'm reading it in for council member Mike Bonin. I was actually gonna be the seconder for this motion. I don't know if I can, since I'm reading it in. If I can, yes. If not, if someone else could second. 
It, it reads, I therefore move that the city council instruct Department okay, of Labor Okay, Mr. Rue, let me just stop. Hold on, Mr. Rue. You cannot introduce a motion on behalf of someone else if you're going to uh, second the motion. It needs to be... Then if, then if someone else could second it. Okay, thank but, you. But I'll be reading it in for Councilman Bonin. Go ahead. I therefore move that the city of city council instruct done in consultation with the Board of Neighborhood Commissioners, the Civil and Human Rights Department, and the Civil and Human Rights Commission to report back to the city council with a plan to implement mandatory diversity, equity, and inclusion training and anti-bias training for all members of Los Angeles neighborhood councils. I further move that the city council instruct done in consultation of board of neighborhood commissioners and the civil rights, human, um, civil and human rights department and the civil and human rights commission to report back to the city council regarding a plan to implement the mayor's executive order number 27 regarding racial equity and city government plans at the neighborhood council level. Okay, Mr. Rue introduces on behalf of Mr. Bonin. I need a second. Second. By Ms. It was seconded by Mr. Koretz. Any others, Mr. Rue? No, that's it. Thank you, ma'am. All right, thank you. Members, any other verbal motions? Okay, seeing none, Madam Clerk, what's before us? Uh, Madam President, for clarification, uh, item number 29 was adopted as amended by motion Martinez Buscaino, and there is a request for item 29 to go forthwith. That is correct. And uh, the motions that were just read will be uh, posted and referred and online in the city clerk website shortly after the meeting uh, aside from that the desk is clear okay members are there any announcements say none any adjourning motions Madam mr Chair. blumenfield thank you um I'm, sorry, I'm asked that we adjourn in the memory of eric taguchi on the mo on the morning of sunday august 9th uh, Mr. Taguchi, Street Services Superintendent with Streets LA, passed away after surgery complications. Yeah. Eric had been serving the people of Los Angeles for close to 30 years. He'd worked in multiple divisions in the Bureau, including the Street Cleaning Division, where in addition to his normal duties, he was the trainer for many of the Street Sweeper equipment operators. He was promoted as a Street Services Supervisor 2 in the Special Projects Division in 2012, and he supported the street maintenance division in the West Valley uh, until 2014, when he was promoted to street services superintendent one in the construction services division until his recent passing. He contributed to the success of many programs throughout the bureau, including the design build grant funded programs, vision zero, failed streets and measure R and, and, and the discretionary funded programs. He also provided his, his technical expertise to award contracts for the new cold asphalt technology. Eric was a person with integrity who was well liked by his colleagues from all the divisions uh, where he worked. He was a person that you could rely on to get things done. Everyone talked about his smile. He always had a smile and a positive attitude. He was willing to provide support to anyone who asked for it and he never hesitated to share his experience with others. He has survived by his wife, Eleanor, and his three children, daughter, Kimmy, and sons, Kenji and Ricky. Eric's passing is a big loss to the Streets LA family and to the entire city family. He will be missed tremendously by all. Our thoughts and prayers are with his family, his friends, and the entire Streets LA team. May he rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Bloomfield. Mr. Cedillo? Yes, Madam Chair, with a heavy heart, uh, I want to acknowledge and adjourn in the memory of Pilar Olga Godoy. She was born October 15, 1938, in the home that her father built on Lancaster Street in the edges of Boar Heights. In 1957, she graduated from Lincoln High School and was chosen by her classmates as one of the uh, Lancery Phoebeans for her leadership and academic success. After graduating from high school, she uh, worked as a stenographer for the uh, Los Angeles Board of Public Works. Uh, later, she married and stopped working to become a full-time homemaker. She raised her four children in the city. Uh, later in life, she returned to work for the city. She was a rec assistant at the Eagle Rock 
Child Care Center, and then later at the Lincoln Heights Senior Center. She probably worked as an advocate for seniors until she passed August 2nd, 2020. Pilar was a selfless person who served others. She was loved and adored by her family and friends and will be greatly missed by her four children, three son-in-laws, nine grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, and the Lincoln Heights seniors. Let me say to you about uh, Pilad. She was an incredible woman, uh, loved at the uh, Lincoln Heights Senior Center. Uh, as you know, each year we give away turkeys to the senior, to the Lincoln Heights seniors. And it's one of the biggest events of our office uh, each year. It's the way we kind of kick off the holiday season. And she was always there. She's just such a, a thoughtful, pleasant, uh, articulate, uh, capable, uh, person and we were very pleased to have her at the center. I'm, I'm really heartbroken the fact that she won't be there. Um, she was so sharp and really aware of civic matters and what was going on with the city. And I'm just I'm shocked. I'm heartbroken and shocked because um, she seemed so healthy and so uh, vibrant the last time I saw her. And um, she will be loved and missed by the entire Lincoln Heights senior community and obviously by her family and those of the city family who knew her. So I thank you for this uh, opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Rue. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, hello, everyone. Um, this weekend, Los Angeles lost a beloved hero of Griffith Park. If you visited the Griffith Park carousel in the past three decades, you might have met the operator Julio Gostinski. Julio has one of those Los Angeles stories full of light and joy. After immigrating, immigrating here from Peru, he got a job at the Griffith Park Carousel as a teenager. For many, this would just be a summer job. But for Julio, making children smile and brightening the community turned out to be his calling. And he continued operating the carousel for 30 years. He knew the carousel like the back of his hand, giving personalities and stories to each of the carousel's horses and giving out free rides to returning customers who loved the carousel. Julio made community wherever he went. He brought kindness and care to the people that worked for him and the Griffith Park that knew, staff that knew him and the countless children who made the memories of his beloved carousel. His, this is a huge loss for Griffith Park. He will be deeply missed and remembered fondly by so many. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ru. Mr. Lee? Mr. Lee, did you have an adjourning motion? Apologize. Thank you, Madam President. Um, colleagues, uh, today, I'd like to adjourn in memory of uh, former Chief Legislative Analyst and DWP General Manager, Ron Deaton. Uh, Ron Deaton was born in Long Beach on January 12th, 1943. And after attending college, he took a job here with the city with the Department of Water and Power in 1965. Then in 1976, he transferred out of the DWP and began working in the Chief Legislative Analyst's office. In uh, 1993, he became the Chief Analyst chief legislative analyst for the city council. And during his tenure as CLA, D, uh, Mr. Deaton was referred to as the 16th council member uh, of the city council for his strong knowledge of policy and how the city works. Uh, Mr. Deaton worked on everything from city's 911 system, building new parks in every part of the city and developing uh, library services so children and adults everywhere, regardless of income level, would have access to them. Uh, he was also very instrumental in historical restoration in the city, including the Point Furman Lighthouse, the Pueblo, and City Hall. In 2004, he became general manager of DWP and held this position until he retired from city service in 2007. I started working in this building in 1996 for council member Joel Wax, and I remember watching Mr. Deaton as he went from council member to council member and whenever the city or an individual council member faced a problem, they always turned to Ron. When I saw him speaking to a council member, I would look at any motion that came out of that office because I knew that Ron knew where every single pot of money was in the city. And I would immediately look into those funds. He was a mentor to so many of the people who actually still work in the city. 
Uh, he was a leader, and even though I did not work for him, I learned so much from him and how to get things done in the city. Um, it's a big loss to us uh, for those who knew him. Um, he is uh, survived by his wife, Ellery, his brother, Gary, and his wife, Joy, his children, David, Daniel, Deidre, and Dara, as well as their spouses and 12 grandchildren. May Mr. Ron Deaton rest in peace. Thank you, Mr. Lee. We can please include all members on that adjourning motion. Thank you. Mr. Blumenfield? I didn't realize I pressed it, but let me just say about, about Deaton. Uh, I got to know him uh, when I was a staffer in uh, Congress back in the early 90s and late 80s, and he came to to Washington and we would talk about the city and, and had a relationship with him ever since. And he was, he was an amazing person. Uh, it, it is a big loss for this city because he really, uh, he really helped make this city what it is today. So thank you for including me and all the other council members on this motion. Thank you. Any other adjourning motions members? Okay, seeing none, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. stories of, of the clients that are here made me really understand that there's you know different situations that the people go through these volunteers took to heart their civic duty calling and became our everyday heroes never uh, it was never a boring day uh, as a disaster service worker it can be really tiring it can be really draining but it's also really fulfilling too being out there in the community and helping out A lot of appreciation for what I have. Many times we think that you're, you don't have much in life, but when you get to actually work with those who are less fortunate at this time, it has definitely made me appreciate life in itself. People know that even in the most difficult times, they still have a way to help them. Like they, still, they still have us to help them, and they're not alone. Thank you so much to the more than 2,500 LA City employees who have served as disaster service workers and to all those who will serve in the weeks ahead. During the COVID pandemic, we need all hands on deck and you are a valuable set of hands for us. In fact, I consider you part of our public safety team. You who served as disaster service workers went beyond the call of duty to ensure that our most vulnerable and neediest neighbors were taken care of. You've really uh, stood tall. Uh, you've really provided leadership at a moment of crisis and you've really been the better angels of the city. I often tell everybody how much city workers are really dedicated to the city and you have proved that once again with your actions. You are all superheroes among many heroes in our community. As a disaster service worker during the COVID-19 pandemic, there is no more important work than you were doing right now. We could not do anything without you and we really appreciate all the valuable contributions You've really helped our most vulnerable Angelinos through this very difficult time. Your commitment to your city and your neighbors is a credit to all city workers. Your selfless actions working at the test centers, Project Dream Key, and the many other DSW assignments have served the city and the many Angelinos in need during these difficult times. You embody what it is to be a city employee. Your work and dedication is critical to the city of Los Angeles in this time of need. What you do during the summer at the time is very essential and very important to the city. Putting shelters over our homeless community, providing food to our senior citizens, you are saving lives. We're so proud of you. 
I see you and I appreciate so much as somebody who lives in the city of LA and who loves the city of Los Angeles, your service to your city. The testing site, helping older Angelinos at a senior meals hotline or assisting those who are experiencing homelessness at a shelter. You've made a huge difference in the daily lives and saved probably many lives throughout this pandemic. Just wanted to thank all of you disaster service workers for your great efforts in helping the city of Los Angeles. I really want to thank the over 185 employees from the Bureau of Engineering who have served as disaster service workers. So on behalf of the 4 million residents we all serve, thank you for your selflessness, your dedication, and being angels in this city of angels. And from my team to yours, I want to say thank you. I really want to thank you. You are the best of Los Angeles. Offer you a big virtual hug and a super mil gracias and a very heartfelt thank you. Thank you all again. So again, you have our deepest gratitude. On behalf of myself, and the Information Technology Agency, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing. From every department around the city, thank you. I am so proud of you, so proud to serve alongside you as a city employee. Thank you so much. Your work is greatly appreciated. Thank you. You are an example of why Los Angeles is called the City of Angels. Thank you very much. Thanks to everyone. Thank you so very much. Thanks to all of you. On behalf of your colleagues, we love you, we appreciate you, you are our heroes, thank you. We're all so grateful for the city workforce and all the work that you've done throughout this pandemic, thank you. Once again, thank you. We will get through these days together and we will get through them because of you. LA Strong. 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 To our everyday heroes, to you we say thank you. Not sure who to contact in Los Angeles when you have to. Request bulky item pickup, graffiti removal, report animal related services, notify the city of illegal dumping, pothole repair, street sweeping, find city resources, pay your LADWP bill, and so on and so on and so on. Well, thanks to the updated MyLA311 app, you have the answer to all your questions in the palm of your hand. Just visit the App Store on iOS or the Google Play Store on Android and download the free MyLA 3-in-1 app. How does it work? Well, let's take a bulky item, for example. It's way too big to fit in your car, right? Just open up the app, touch the Create a Service Request tab, and this takes you to the Create Service Request page. Under Popular Service Request, right on top of the list is Bulky Items. Touch the tab and a new window opens up. If the item does not belong to you, touch the No button and fill out the required information. Check this out. You can hold and drag to move the pin or enter the street address or intersection below. Moving the pin is handy when the location needed does not quite match up to the nearest address or intersection, such as along park trails, the LA River, or on vacant lots. Hit the Done button when you are ready to move forward. Our new MyLA311 system will now inform you of other open service requests at the same location to avoid taking duplicate requests. Next, touch Details. You'll notice there's quite a selection of bulky items to choose from. Once the item and quantity are selected, you can help us by providing even further details by touching the Select Location of the item. You can even add more than one item to this service request. Once all the items are added, touch Done. If you haven't registered for an account, we'll talk more about that in just a bit. You can enter your contact info or choose to submit anonymously. Next, you can add a photo by taking one using the app or by using an existing picture on your phone. 
It's especially helpful to city departments if you include comments about hard to find locations such as next to this address in the vacant lot under the palm tree. You'll notice a targeted service date has just been added. This is the date you will need to have your bulky items out on the curb by 5 a.m. if not out already. Then all you need to do is hit submit and confirm your service request and you're done. A service request number will pop up. From here you can create another request for this or another location, return to the home page, or exit the app. But before you go, you'll see we provided the information of the appropriate agency handling your specific request. This will help you follow up if necessary. Let's go back to the home page to check out some more details. Now, in order to view your service request, you first have to log on or register for an account. If you have an LADWP online account, you can use that login information. If not, you can still create your own MyLA 311 account. The process is very similar to most online accounts. You can also find city facilities near your current location by selecting the city info icon. You can either enter an address or touch the funnel icon to narrow or expand your search. Simply select the areas or services you are looking for and then touch the icons that pop up on the map. You can look up information about city services from our city services directory. Other options include city bill pay and even viewing city social media feeds using City Hall News. Now, if you prefer to use the service from your computer, simply go to lacity.org and click the 311 icon and then select your choice from the menu. My LA 311, it puts the power of City Hall in your hands.